Next week looks like a busy week. It's, that's fine. We have a lot of things that we need to be able to cover and to be able to walk through as the Senate. Next week's particularly divisive, though, in some of the issues that are coming up. And let me give you two examples that I hear are on the docket for next week. One of them deals with how we vote in America. Now, in Oklahoma, we, we know how we vote. Each state determines its own structure of how they vote. And in Oklahoma, you can do absentee mail-in voting with no excuses. It, for any reason you want to be able to mail in a ballot, you can do that. You can do in-person voting early. In fact, this year, our state legislature met. They added another day of in-person voting. So there's lots of days of in-person voting in Oklahoma. Or you can actually go to the poll the day of the election and be able to vote then. That's up to you. We have very straightforward voter ID laws. We have a system that sets up that if you do early voting or absentee voting, all the disputes on those are handled before election day itself. So that on election day, when the polls close at 7 p.m., we then finish all the voting, or the counting, I should say, on early absentee, on early in person, and then we're counting the day of. Usually by about 10.30 at night on election day, we're done voting and everyone's watching all the final results in from the entire state. It's a pretty straightforward, clean process that we've seen that's exceptionally reliable. In fact, it's so tough in 2016 when the Russians were probing different systems to try to get into it. Our state was one of the states the Russians tried to get into, couldn't get into our system, and they moved on to other states to try to get into those. We have a secure system. We have a reliable system. But that's apparently not enough. Because Senate Bill 1, that's coming to the floor next week, would say, Oklahoma, we're going to completely change your system. People in Washington, D.C. don't like how you vote, don't like your clean reliability efficiency. Regardless of complaints, we think we want to change it here in Washington, D.C. Interestingly enough, we have a system that can also verify if someone voted twice. In fact, in this past election, 57 people in Oklahoma voted twice. We could verify that after the fact based on all the records, and we can go back and be able to actually prosecute those individuals that chose to vote twice, because that's not legal. Here's what happens when S-1 comes to the floor. The debate here on S-1 will begin with no voter ID. Take away your voter ID in Oklahoma. Change the way that you do early voting. In fact, change the way that ballots are actually collected entirely. No longer in Oklahoma will we know the winner of our election at 10.30 on election night. S1 changes that and said ballots have to be able to be allowed to trickle in for 10 more days after the election is over. So we won't know at 10.30 at night on election night. We'll know two weeks later who actually won the elections. And as far as a reliable system that we can all verify and check, oh no, it changes that dramatically. It now opens up what's called ballot harvesting. Ballot harvesting would allow political operatives to go door to door to be able to engage with people that had mail-in ballots and to say to them, have you mailed your ballot in? If they say no, they can say, well, let's just fill it out right here on the porch. And then you can hand it to me and I'll take it in. So on election day, what happens is political operatives show up with boxes full of ballots and turn in boxes full of ballots with the words, trust me, these are all good. I would tell you in Oklahoma, we like it better when the postman carries that ballot or when you actually turn it into that county or precinct official so we know where it's been. There's been an accurate chain of custody, not someone showing up with a box full of ballots saying, trust me, I collected all these. Because when that happens and someone just collecting ballots, you have no idea if the person voting voted for one person and left the rest of them blank and the person carrying them just filled out the rest of the ballot for them, you have no chain of custody at all on it. That's why I say S1 makes voting easy, cheating easy, and verifying elections impossible. This is not the direction we should go. If we want to build trust in our election system in America, let's let each state build trust in their election system for each state, like we do in Oklahoma where we work together to make sure we can make it as easy as possible for every person to be able to vote and to encourage every person to vote. But when it's over, to verify that election. 
and to be able to know that we can check it all off and to go, regardless of the outcome, we can trust the outcome because we know we can verify it. Let's make it easy to vote, hard to cheat, and easy to verify. Not having Washington, D.C. folks here say D.C. is righteous and states are wrong. I think there's lots of great state, lots of great people all over the country that want to do their elections right. And it aren't Republicans or Democrats. They're just people protecting democracy in the states. Let's keep that system. That's the first of two divisive bills that are coming up next week, which will absolutely fail in this body and should fail in this body. 